action of the jowls. To me, this is a wonderful therapy. Uh, unfortunately, the vast majority of doctors out there that are doing this procedure are doing Kybella uh, in the neck, which is where the FDA approval is for. Of course, you can use it off-label for the rest of the, the body, so long as the patient uh, has been consented for that, which we have. So the reason I don't believe it's good for the neck is that first, it doesn't work that effectively. Second of all, the real problem in the neck is when you start to take out fat, you actually show more banding. And the more banding you show, the actually the older you get. So I encourage you, even though this looks like a simple technique, which it is, um, that you really avoid trying to do this um, in the neck area. But if you have a skilled injector like the a physician that knows what he's doing, you can inject easily in the jowls. It doesn't equal a facelift. People always worry about also loosening skin with this. No, it just tightens up really nicely. I've done this for a few years now. Um, but it, you just, I have it very systematic. I don't need that silly grid that the uh, Allergan company gives. I know exactly where to put it, how much dose to put it in. And the other thing that's really huge, if you've had Kybell in the neck or have read about it online, is a significant pain afterwards, and you just don't have that. Um, when I tried Kybell in the past in the neck, which is, which is you know, again, something I don't uh, advocate, uh, without the lidocaine in there, it's incredibly painful for 90 minutes. Now the patient has a little lidocaine, she didn't feel the injection, and she really will have no discomfort afterwards. But it does lead to quite a bit of swelling for the first week, a little bit beyond that, so the patients always know that.